Welcome into the Cool Grandpa Podcast. I'm excited to have you sit down and join me and my guest, Aaron Larson, as we talk about Grandparents Academy. Now, Grandparents Academy is something that Aaron has started, and it is full of resources that help grandparents find out information that maybe they're not so sure about. Things like how to use some of the technology around us to connect with their grandchildren, build up those connection points that they can use to further their relationships. And we're not saying technology replaces those in-person connections, but we're saying is that in this world where everybody's texting and on Facebook and Instagram and all these different technologies, that it's a great place to go to learn how to use these tools that your grandchildren are using so that you can connect with them, follow them on their adventures, and they follow you on your adventures. You're going to enjoy learning more about Grandparents Academy and the great courses that are coming up this spring that you will want to be sure to take advantage of. Now, one thing, too, that I want to talk about before we get started with this conversation is that I've got a program called Buy Me a Coffee, and this is set up to help me raise some money to help offset the cost of the podcast. So if you would like to support the show, please go to buymeacoffee.com slash cool grandpa and you'll be able to donate 10 bucks, 15 bucks, whatever it is you, you feel comfortable with. And I appreciate everything that you provide for me. It really helps with the production and the you know membership cost for putting this podcast out. Be sure to go to buymeacoffee.com slash cool grandpa and you'll find my profile there. And I've got a link for this in the show notes as well as links for Grandparents Academy in the show notes as well. So you'll be able to find everything that we're talking about on this podcast very quickly by going to cool-grandpa.us, find this episode, and I've got all the links so it's easy peasy for you. Hey, that's enough jibber jabber from me. Let's jump into this conversation. Hello and welcome to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. This is your host Greg Payne coming at you from Studio 12. This podcast is about being the best possible grandpa you can be. Focusing on what it is to be a grandpa and how we can all share that experience together for our grandchildren. Hi Aaron, thanks for joining us on the Cool Grandpa Podcast. I'm excited for us to get in and talk about continuing education for grandparents. Yeah, thanks for having me, Greg. It's it's uh it's great to be back. We really had a great conversation before where you really went in and talked about the importance of the relationship you had with your grandparents. And that was great. And we're going to put a link for that into the show. But for this conversation, I really wanted to talk about Grandparents Academy and the, this group that you've started. The question I've got for you and, and what I'd like to know is, what really started the motivation for launching Grandparents Academy? Thanks, Greg. Yeah, I uh, I'll keep this one short because it's a long story, but but the gist of it is I was living with my grandparents uh, for four years. I call them my grand school years. While other graduates out of college went to grad school, I went to grand school. It was during the Great Recession, and I was really just trying to get back on my feet and and do something meaningful. So I lived with a couple sets of grandparents and um, after you know a few years, I, I was caregiving for my grandpa Grit and I got to be with them for the last year of his life. And it gave me some perspective. I learned a lot of life lessons during that time. And what I realized is life is very short and we're giving we're, we've been when we're blessed with uh, with lessons and, and the people who pour into us uh, during that time, I, I believe that we have a, a responsibility and and a, and a privilege really to try to amplify those blessings. And for me personally, when I look back at my life, I had so I have so many examples of my grandparents pouring into me, and I see the power that exists there or can exist between grandparents. Who are intentional, and and those uh, who really take the time to pour into their grandchildren, and so 
I decided, well, what can I, what can I do uh, to really help with that? I decided to create a, an academy for grandparents because there wasn't one out there. And I just always loved learning. I love my grandparents and, and I was good at technology. So that's really how it came about. Well, that is great because one of the big things that really happened to a lot of us, I'm Gen X, but my dad was quite was a little bit before baby boomers, but with the baby boomers and Gen Xers, all of a sudden we went from these big mainframe computers that took up an entire floor of an office building to desktop PCs and all this technology just kept changing on us. You know, we went through mm-hmm. the internet dot com boom and it went from being where only certain people had emails and certain people had technology to where it was expected that everybody had technology, you know, going back to the Lotus one, two, three and word perfect before Microsoft really dominated that market, that a number of people had moved far enough into their careers to where they didn't really need to use it. But I think grandparents Academy really filled that void in helping people get connected with technology and, and know that it can be used as this useful tool that it's not just something where a bunch of kids are wasting time on, let's say. Yeah, exactly. You know, one of the inspirations for Grandparents Academy was my grandpa, who was an early adopter with technology. And there's there's more of this story in our other interview, but basically he in in his last years of life, he decided to be very intentional. He learned how to use digital a digital camera, which was pretty new at that time. He learned how to use email and he's in his mid seventies and he would take inspirational photos uh, each day and send it to us, his family. And I think that sort of digital communication that, that kind of came about with the internet, it didn't exist before that. And, and it allowed us to stay close and, and for him to uh, leave a, a lasting legacy and, and really impart these important values to us and just let us know he loved us. And it's something that, I still look at those emails to this day, you know, 20 plus years later, and they still inspire me and I can still hear his voice. And and that's the power of technology. And what's really great, Greg, is in the last 10 years, what we're seeing is, you know, everyone's more used to technology. There, there's increasing tech adoption, especially after the pandemic and families especially have realized how important it is to keep in touch uh, especially from a distance and to, and to leverage these tools. So we're emerging into this new era where tech adoption is happening at accelerated rates and there's more motivation for families to say, hey, we got this technology. Let's let's not just sit around on the couch and and doom scroll Facebook all day or or some other technology, but let's let's be intentional about how we use this technology at our fingertips. And we can use it to grow relationships and and strengthen the bonds that we have with our loved ones, if we just learn how to well learn how to do it, but also just have a plan and actually implement that plan. And so, it's an exciting time, and that's a big part of what Grandparents Academy teaches. Is basically uh, we have we have what to do with technology, but we also look at the whole. I would say ecosystem of grandparenting. We have a lot of different course instructors, uh, including yourself, who are experts in different areas, have unique perspectives, and are able to help grandparents in their in their journey, in their own unique journeys, to strengthen those bonds that they have with their grandchildren. Well, and you mentioned a couple of things there that I thought were really important. It was it was learning the technology and then it's using that technology to build those connection points. And what I want to follow up with you on is why do you think that it's important to for grandparents to keep learning, to keep investing in their education? I mean, we've mentioned a couple, so this is a leading question, but I want to hear a little bit about why do you think this is so important versus the person that just is like, I'm going to write a postcard I'm going to, you know, give them a call every couple of weeks. What do you think is the driver behind this? Yeah, I think I think the main thing is when we really love something or or someone, uh, we take the time to learn, learn about them, but also learn how to how we can help them. How can we be beneficial in their lives? And the world has changed a lot and it continues to change rapidly. 
And in order for us to really help each other as as parents, as uh, spouses, as friends, as grandparents, it's important for us to realize that the world is changing, but there there are some there are certain values that that we keep and we hold dear uh, that will never change. But the methods in in which we communicate are changing, and and the methods in which we're able to teach others so that these lessons stick, that these these important stories that are unique to every individual sticks. The, those lessons and those stories can be told in a lot different ways now which is enabled by technology, uh, if we just choose to learn. And the bottom line is leaders, and, and I'm, think, I'm talking about grandparents who are intentional, leaders of their family, leaders are learners first. And they're always learners because the more that you learn, the more influential you can be in the lives of your loved ones. Oh, I love that. I, I, I've always loved that That phrasing of leaders are learners uh, mm-hmm. because it just strikes so true in so many aspects, right? Because we learn in business that if you're not growing, you're shrinking or you're, you're not mm-hmm. growing, you're dying. Um, and that's true in, in our personal lives too. It, when talking with other grandparents about being intentional, one of the biggest things is you've got to keep learning. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I tell people from a different perspective, like go learn about ancient Greece. Number one, it's interesting, but number two, there's some real lessons that you can pull out and you can share with grandkids. So it's not just technology about the learning, but it's also just the world around us because there's so much in there that we don't know. You know, know, we can Google everything, but that's not quite the same as really studying it and learning and adopting it. This also leads me to another question for you, which is, You've been doing Grandparents Academy for now about 10 years or so. Is that is that right? About almost 12, yes. Almost yeah. 12. Wow. Okay, so here's one of the questions I've got for you is what have you been seeing in the changes over the last 10 to 12 years with Generation X starting to become grandparents? And I and I'm Generation X myself, but what have you seen from the differences over those 10 years with learning and, and technology adoption. Yeah, yeah, well, uh as you as you said and even in your example I mean Gen X uh they're they're almost they're just a step away from being digital natives in in a, in a lot of ways with with the internet. So they are more familiar with technology, they use it a lot more, so it's a little less of a curve when when it comes to the actual adoption. Now, I, I would say that the thing that's changed, I think the biggest thing is, I, I don't think, and and I hope this doesn't come across wrong, but I don't think the world has gotten easier or, or better, a better environment for the kids that, that we are raising and, and that are growing up now. I think, I think it's harder. Uh, and as a, a parent of young children right now, I can, I can tell you it is, it's stressful. It's when you're thinking about um, even just education, where they go to school, you're thinking about the environment that they have. You think about the financial situation uh, that we're in, and, and the legacy, and and, um, and just the world around that we're, that we've created for future generations. I don't think we've left the world better for for our younger generations, and and because of that, I think it's more important than ever before that grandparents become intentional and, and really work with parents not not but in not like barge in there and try to take the wheel right but but let's let's bring families together so that they can partner together and and they can think about what are the best ways that grandparents can support uh, how how the parents are raising the children and and what what are the gaps that grandparents can 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 fill and and also the information that they can uh because of their unique position a lot of what they say is probably a lot of what they hear from parents but it, it it's stickier and, and because it's coming from a different perspective and we we see that all the time i mean even i think about my own life about the lessons learned I still think a lot about my grandparents, but my parents were really hard workers too. And, and they taught me a lot of things as well. But it was when it came from my grandparents, it just stuck a little bit better. So 
So I would say that. So tech adoption, I think it's 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 a lot quicker for Gen X, uh, but but also I think um, Gen X, uh, you know, they they've had just as it's speaking generationally, they've they've had a rough go with with a lot of things. The, it's been a difficult journey for for Gen X as well. I think there has been difficulties that have been um, presented and unique challenges for that generation, and. I think the world is is filled with a lot more distractions, uh, a lot more potential uh, landmines uh, that that we have to guard against, and we have to do it as a village and as as strong family units if we want to give our children and future generations hope that they desperately need and direction and guidance so that they can thrive. We have to do it together. It's interesting that you were talking about how. Uh, the use of technology and some of the things that are being offered through Grandparents Academy help to bring that family unit back together. You know, we may not live down the street from each other. We may not be in the same house. But by utilizing some of these tools that we have out there, we can start to be connected more often. You know, we're not waiting until Sunday night uh, when the rates are cheap to make a long distance phone call. You know, and we're not waiting on the mail to uh, deliver a message. We we are able to send a text to a 12 year old who might be struggling mm. in middle school and just say, hey, I believe in you, kiddo. You know, have a yeah. great day. And being able to have that connection that that really I think the family unit grew up. I almost want to say it's supposed to be that way, but every situation is different. But we had so much of a history and it's across cultures of families living close by to each other. You know, it was mm -hmm. really unique for somebody to take off and move to the next town versus, you know, grandpa's down the street or grandma's down the street and here's our house and we're all meeting at church to go to, at the same day, same time, same service, all that kind of stuff. And so it's unique to where I think we've splintered apart, but then we've got an opportunity to kind of come back together again by using some of these tools. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, there there are some unique synergies that that exist and can exist between modern technology and and the tried and true traditional methods as well, like co combining um, the sequence and, and the way in, in which you would use, for example, um, like printed materials. So, as part of our, our gold membership with Grandparents Academy, I created over a hundred different activities uh, for grandkids and. And most of them have to do with um, value, teaching values in a way that's fun and meaningful and engaging. So an example would be I have this coloring page activity and, and I try to use fun animals. So I have an elephant and, and I have uh, the word compassion on it. So the kids are coloring the elephant and they're coloring compassion. And along with that on page two, there are questions, uh, prompts that that can help the child first learn about elephants. So there's a fun fact about elephants and, and why they're compassionate. And then we, we talk about, uh, we ask the grandchild themselves, you know, what do, why do you think uh, that elephants are seen as compassionate? So get them talking about it. And then we have a prompt that has a grandchild then ask the question to the grandparent, you know, um, grandpa or grandma, you know, what, what's an example of compassion in your life? Or when did you last experience compassion? So grandchild asked the grandparent. So that allows for that bond to happen, for stories to pass on, for that for them to get to know each other. And then the last part is an application question, which says, okay, so grandchild, how can how can you be more compassionate in your life? So now the grandchild is thinking, well, okay, what does this look like in my own life? So I have these activities that are that are available and as part of the gold membership. And and this is something going back to my point, taking a traditional sort of um, method, which is you know, you could do this in person, which is great, but you could also do this using video chat. You can send the PDF document over to, over to the parents. They can print it out and you, you two can be on a Zoom or, or other video chat and, and you can 
color this together and you can ask these questions together and you could still have this fun and meaningful experience by combining the two technologies. I love how you have been able to start to adapt some of these things to, to fit that. I'm going to say traditional uh, forms of communication and bonding, but it, I, I just absolutely love it. But I do want to ask you, because you did bring up the gold membership, and I know there's a lot going on with Grandparents Academy that you're yeah. adding on to constantly, but can you take yeah. us back a little bit and do a little bit of a timeline for when you launched uh, back about 12 years ago and then yeah. kind of walk us through all the great stuff that you're adding on? Yeah, great. Yeah. So 12 years ago, it all started. It, I, again, I... I was inspired by my grandparents, and then I actually helped uh, teach my grandma Grace how to use social media. So got her on Facebook, and I created a guide for her. I think it was called Texting for Grannies. And so, you know, I just started to create these um, free resources, and I would have them available on the website. So it started out all about um, taking the knowledge that I knew, which was mostly just uh, focused on digital technology and social media and how to use it and creating guides and eBooks. And then it, it kind of transitioned into, well, what if, what if I reimagine, what if we reimagine how people use social media itself and, and how, and I asked myself, how could we use social media and transform posts into actual assets of value as a thing like actual assets that grandparents can use and share that would bring their families closer together over the distance. And so I started to create these really fun memes and and uh, pictures and and videos and and some of them just went viral and they're they're still being shared today. I mean, we're talking over 300,000 shares on one of them and and one of them's you know closing in on on 150,000 shares. So it's you know these are these are um, fun memes that ended up sparking these digital conversations, which that was the whole point was let's prove that we can use social media in a way that can bring families together. So I really focused on that for a while. And then then I got into some course creation. So I, I created a course called Grow Your Digital Legacy, and, and I'm offering that again this spring. But that's all about how can we we look at kind of take a take a survey a look at all these different technologies and and then develop an intentional plan uh, on how we can cultivate values i call the process uh, legacy gardening again inspired from my grandma teaching me how to garden but how how do we plant these seeds the inten intentionally so that we can grow these values in the lives of our grandkids using this technological platforms so that's Grow Your Digital Legacy. And then I started getting into, I, I can't remember how, how this happened, but I think um, I think it was a grandparent reached out to me and they started to talk about um, being cut off from their grandchildren. And, and it was the, the, the thought was so foreign to me at the time. And so I looked into it and I realized, uh, and this has just been a growing yet silent epidemic that's happening to this day, uh, that grandparents are being cut off from their grandchildren a lot of times, un most of the time unjustly uh, because of of a death or a divorce or a disagreement, a frivolous disagreement within the family. Uh, they're just being cut off from their grandkids. And so I thought, well, how can I help these grandparents who who desperately want to have this relationship with their grandkids, but through no fault of their own, they're no longer able to connect with them. And so I created, a, uh, I partnered with a nonprofit, just kind of helping with them, became a consultant, just volunteer and started hosting a, a free online support group for this group of grandparents. And it's just grown and grown over the years. And now that kind of brings us back to to this year, all, all the while, Greg, like, so this is just a passion project. It's not, it, it's something that I felt called to really. It, I call it a passion project, but it's deeper than that. I feel like it was, it's, this is my calling. And so I kind of, I just kept at it, planting seeds, growing over the years while I'm still working full time, getting married, uh, having my first child, now our second child. And uh, it's something that just recently in October, after the pandemic, I think that, that really, um, 
that hit me hard in a lot of ways because I saw the damage that it was it was having on families, especially between elders and grandparents and and the rest of the the family. And I I just thought I just knew like now is the time. This I need to dedicate more focus to this. And so I left my full time position as a, a business consultant, and I decided to just dive into this thing. And I held a, an online summit called Grandparents Week. I created, I basically, you know, the inspiration of that, Greg, well, you were you were one of the speakers, right, that we had. And I just got tired of hearing, like, I would, I would wish grandparents happy Grandparents Day. And they're like, what? Grandparents? Like, they had no idea. I'm like, like, I was the first one who told them that. And I said, yeah, you know, so society is not honoring their grandparents. Grandparents don't even know this is a thing. So I thought, well, let's just make it a whole week. Let's invite all these experts in grandparenting, bring them all together and and really honor and celebrate grandparenthood and, and give some great advice and tips. So that's Grandparents Week. And we're doing another one here this next year. We'll do it every year. And then I started uh, another online summit that's, that's next week. Well, I'm not sure when this airs, but it's February 15th through 17th. And it's all about helping and serving alienated grandparents. So this one's called Reconciliation Summit. And it's the same concept. Let's bring together experts who who help families with this every day, and let's give them a platform to serve and share their best stuff. And that's what Reconciliation Summit is all about, is let's help these grandparents on their journey towards reconciliation. And then now we're coming to where we are today, which is the spring. We have a catalog for the first time ever. We have a catalog. And I was thinking, Greg... I was thinking like I'd have five courses, maybe like that would be a win when I, when I first thought about this back in, I don't know, September or so. Well, let's put a catalog together. 14 courses. We have 14 courses that are available as most of them, you know, they're not all taught by me. There's just a few that are taught by me. The rest of them are taught by really amazing experts in, in different areas like yourself, Greg, teaching intentional grandfathering. Uh, Carrie Byrne teaching grandparenting from a distance. Uh, Dee Dee Moore, she's focusing in on new grandparents and kind of the first steps to success. Roland Thompson, I know he's been on your show, teaching uh, how to teach grandchildren financial literacy. This is coming from the retirement coach. Uh, and, and, you know, there, there are several other ones. We have a, an expert who, and this isn't exactly related to grandchildren, but it's for grandparents in this stage of life who are often also caring for their parents. And, and so we have experts who are talking or really teaching on dementia and, and how to care for el- their elders, like their parents, and uh, how to age uh, in, in a way that's, that's fully engaged, kind of looking at aging holistically and, and the physical part of that, the emotional, the spiritual, all of that. So this is this just came together. And I just talked to another expert just this week who who wants to put another course so we might add a 15th course this spring possibly if not that'll be in the in the fall but it's amazing it is amazing just the the quality of people who are out there who who have this knowledge and this heart for helping grandparents it's it's incredible and i think uh i just feel feel so honored uh just to know all these people and and just to help build this platform where they can really shine and serve. I love the fact when you sent me over the website so I could take a, a look at the course catalog and I started scrolling through and my mind went, this is like when I went to junior college and I'm, I'm scrolling, you know, it's not as big a thick mm-hmm. as four year university, but yeah, I, I was getting into it where it was like, holy cow, Aaron's put together and pulled all these experts into this thing that I was so excited because I do yeah. want to sit in on a couple of those courses myself. And you bet. that leads me to another question, which is if you've got grandparents, one, if they're listening to this show or they, they know who you are in Grandparents Academy, they're probably already fairly engaged. But what are they going to be able to take away from these courses? And what are they going to take away from Grandparents Academy if they choose to, to join up? Yeah, well, there's there's something for every grandparent at Grandparents Academy. That's that's a, one of our core values is, you know, wherever you are in your grandparenting stage, 
uh, whether you have you're just starting out as a new grandparent, you have young grandkids, you're a long distance grandparent, you're an alienated grandparent, uh, or you know, or you just you're a lifelong learner and you want to get the most, the the best of the rest of your years, right? There is something for every grandparent in our catalog, and if if you don't see anything, you just let me know because I'm going to find that expert that that you need to get you on the, the kind of the next level in your life because the reality is greg uh, thinking back to the kind of mortality motivation here and and thinking about you know how fragile life is and and how how little time we actually really have to to make a big impact in the lives of our loved ones and to really reach for our potential uh, individually and grandparents are in this spot, like this is the prime time of your life. There's never been a better time where you can really reach for that potential individually, where you can have that personal growth, but also, and, and maybe even more importantly, the the impact that you can have and the influence in the life of, of loved ones who, who really need you. It, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, you ask kids, you might not think that the younger generations really care about, you know, the older generations or that, or you might think, oh, they have everything. They got their own iPads and tablets and they, they got the internet. They got everything they possibly need. No, don't believe the lie. Do not. That's, that's, that's like, I think the biggest lie in society. And when you look at adults who, you know, have, have been there, who have wisdom, you know, the biggest lie is is for them to believe that they have nothing to offer and that they have no voice and and there's no room for them to grow because there is and you can you can have an impact you can make like i said the rest of your years the best of your years and so check out grandparents academy and, and here's the other thing you know we talked about the membership who's the membership for well mem- the membership is really just designed for grandparents who who are lifelong learners, like who who really who feel like like they would take more than one course because they love their grandkids so much, they love being a grandparent so much, they love learning so much that from an economic standpoint, it just makes sense to to be part of the membership. But they also get some of these other benefits, like I talked about the resource library and all the activities that's ever growing. I'm always adding to it, so they they get all of that. They get uh, a couple free courses. So my signature courses, which are cultivating values with grandchildren, I talked about legacy garden gardening, and then the other one is is grow your digital legacy is is the other signature course. Those are free as part of the membership, and then you get fifty percent off all the other courses. So anything else you wanna you wanna take, it's it's a it's a darn good deal. If you're a lifelong learner, you love being a grandparent, definitely check out the gold membership. We'll be sure to put links in for the courses so people can check those out. And we'll be sure to make sure it's as easy as possible. So if you go to coolgrandpa.us and check that out or go to uh, grandparentsacademy.com and check that out, you know, you, you'll you get there. You'll get the information. But I'll be sure for the show notes for here to make it as easy as possible for us. One of the things that I really enjoyed about hearing about the course and Grandparents Academy is, and folks, this is not something where you give it to somebody and you say, well, this is going to teach you how to be a grandfather, or this is going to teach you how to be a grandmother because you're doing it wrong. It's it's not that at all. What it mm-hmm. is, is like, hey, if you may be struggling a little bit on how to connect over a long distance, we've got Carrie Byrne on here who's talking about connecting and being a long distance grandparent. And we've got this person on here that might be able to help you out a little bit. So it's really, it's a bunch of gold nuggets that you can come through these courses and come through the membership and pick up and just add to what you're already doing. And, you know, Mm -hmm. sometimes there's a gap in our knowledge and that happens with everybody. But at the same time, it's like you're already doing something awesome by being engaged. And this is just more awesomeness, if we can say that, that we want to pour into you. Yeah, that's exactly right, Greg. And and you know, part of it too is anyone who's been a part uh, of a class and that they're really interested in, and and just been around other 
learners who are also passionate. I think that's a big part of it is the community aspect that comes along with being part of Grandparents Academy, being part of, of a group of lifelong learners who love being grandparents. You, you just iron sharpens iron. You, you learn more and more things and you have and it's fun. It is fun. And that's that's the whole point. It's not like you're deficient in, in, in these areas. It, it's about let's have some fun. Let's celebrate being grandparents and let's make the biggest impact and influence we could, we could possibly have. Let's do that together. Why go it alone? You know, and, and one more thing too, along those lines. So there's a community aspect, which is, which is amazing. But he, here's the other thing with grandparents is grandparents, like I said, they, they can have a huge impact in the lives of their loved ones. So the other aspect of this, Greg, is really just thinking about yourself as a lifelong learner and the physical benefits of of just learning. I mean, there's numerous studies show how important it is for us to just keep being active in, in our learning. And a lot of times we're filling our heads with with meaning meaningless activity, uh, meaningless content. Uh, it's like uh, you know the the junk junk just filling our minds with junk food and and. Why not instead be choosy and, and pick out something that's wholesome, some wholesome education that can really make a difference in the lives of others, make a difference in your own life? I think that's the key is we're seeing more and more opportunities for grandparents to really choose the information that they want to feed their own minds and and also do it in a way that they can make a big impact. Yeah, I, I agree with that because... One of the things that I think happens in after talking with a, uh, mental health experts and, and people about aging and, and grandfathers in particular is one of the things that really slows us down and causes some depression and anxiety is when we're not engaged, when we're not, you know, learning anymore. We've retired from work. Mm -hmm. We've retired from something. We're not pushing ourselves and challenging ourselves. So there's all sorts of different things that that older men can definitely get into to, to spark some of that. And as a personal uh, part of this too is, and I had to take my own advice, right? Is I had to sit down over the last couple of weeks and learn how to create an online store for my website so I can sell mm -hmm. my children's book. And then I had to go and go through the process of setting everything up on Amazon and learning mm -hmm. all that and go and getting frustrated the entire way. And, the whole thing in my mind was like, I could be paying somebody 50 bucks on Fiverr to sit down and knock this thing out in like 45 mm -hmm. minutes. But it was like, nope, you, you keep telling everybody you got to get in and learn. And so this is similar to that where you're going to find courses, you're going to find different individuals that you may connect with that can just help help with this process and, and keep us old guys engaged, let's say. Well, I, lo I love the book, by the way. It, it, I think I, I left a, a a nice review about it on Amazon, and and I gotta say, you know, to your point, what what's what's really amazing is any and this is like this is what's amazing about the world that we live in today. Like anybody can publish a book. Like remember twenty years ago, like the the idea, like who who can self publish and and how can you how can you do this yourself? Look, listen, to grandparents. Like you can create meaningful, like like legacy types of items, your own books. You can create your own T-shirts. You can create your own whatever. It's the the internet is at your fingertips, and it's only limited by your own creativity and and, and your drive to learn how to do it. I mean, it's the world is really your oyster, and I mean there there is no limits. Yeah. I, I love it. And, and, you know, I'm going to wave the flag for Gen X. We're the ones that had, uh, you know, Tony Hawk and Bones Brigade and punk music and, you know, all these different things. And so back in the 80s, we were all no limits. We can push, push everything. Now that we're a little bit older, hey, let's pick up those flags again and, and push ourselves and, and no limits on what Gen X can do here as as grandparents. Yes, Gen X uh, grandparents, is, especially, I think they're going to be redefining the role of grandparenting, and and everyone you know has their own unique flavor uh, of grandparenting, and and as it should be, but but with Gen X, I mean, 
you've been through, you've lived a different life experience than, than other generations. And from that, you have the opportunity to improve upon what came before us. And, and really there is, it has to in, improve because the world has changed. So it has to be different in order for us to make more of an impact in the lives of our loved ones. We have to adapt. We just have to. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. I've got a question for you, and I know we're getting close to to wrapping this up, and this is maybe a little bit personal, so if you don't want to answer, that's fine. But uh, as you were getting married and you were like telling your fiance and now your wife, hey, by the way, I've got this Grandparents Academy thing. What was her reaction to to all of that? Because that that is different. I mean, if you walk in, anybody that has like a podcast, whether it's about baseball or whatever YouTube channel, when you bring in a significant other into this and you're introducing them, uh, yeah. you know, sometimes you can get some different re- responses and I'm not saying negative, but just, I'm curious no. to know how, what, how she took it. Uh, well, well, let me just start by saying, uh, I am so grateful for my wife, Andre. She, uh, she's the person who has helped me through all these years, stick with this this passion project, and it, it, it certainly hasn't been on my own volition. There are times when it gets really hard, and you're thinking nobody's even paying attention. I mean, it's been 12 years, and and I haven't given up. And that's because I've I've had people like my wife who who are like, "This is you. This is your reminding me that this is my calling, and and uh, you know what what it matters to me." So to have a partner in life who recognizes that in you, I, I think is invaluable. It's it's a real blessing. So I want, first, I want to start there. And then next, what I would say, is, it was kind of funny. So Andre knew during our courting process, like when we first started dating, I made sure she knew how important my grandparents were. And, and I actually used them, uh, my, my grandparents, uh, as a way, as kind of a litmus test in some ways. There, there was like, there were some trials uh, that that happened, like going to Granny Grit's farm and and making sure that that um, my fiance or my you know my girlfriend that that she would uh, be able to you know be okay with going to the funny farm. We called the funny farm going to the funny farm and on a Saturday or Sunday and and fixing some electric fences or, or digging some post holes or uh, you know getting working out in in the garden and in, in different areas and. And that they could they could handle that like it that it wouldn't bother them like so Andre when she she went out when we were dating we went to Granny Grit's house and and we had to fix a fence and she was right out there helping along and I think that that was one of the the ways that I could you know I could tell and and I got you know kind of Granny's approval uh, that this could be a good match so there was that and then another example she she tells the story all the time is. Uh, when I first, I was reaching back out, we, we were kind of on and off and I reached back out to her one time. And after I kind of figured out, um, figure out what I wanted in life and, and what love really was learning from my grandparents. Uh, so I reached back out to her and, and she had another date going on. And, and so I, I said, well, just cancel it and come with me. It, it's my, it was my grandma's, I think it was her 80th birthday or something. Let's, let's go celebrate with my grandma. And she did. She, she totally canceled her existing date to come with me to go celebrate grandma Grace's birthday. So that's, just, you know, it was basically like she, my grandparents were very much part of my whole uh, courting process. And Andre knew from the very beginning that how much they meant to me and, and, and how much this pro this project um, has meant to me over the years. And, and she has been 110% uh, supportive and I, I can't ask for anything better than that. Oh, that that's awesome. And you know, it's awesome on a couple, on multiple levels. The one that really jumps out to me is, is having somebody that will continue to push you when, because mm-hmm. doing what we're doing you have to build up the discipline and then sometimes you're building it up to where you're not always getting feedback from the people you're serving. Mm. And that can be disheartening sometimes. And sometimes it's hard to go, Oh, I've got to do, you know, let me do this other PDF. Let me do this other thing. And having that person behind you that can kind of push you and encourage you and, and do that. 
it it really does help and and you're very very fortunate with that relationship yes absolutely Aaron, I've had you on a long time talking about Grandparents Academy, talking about these courses coming up in the spring. Is there anything about Grandparents Academy that I haven't asked you that you would like to talk about? Well, I thought if it's all right, I could turn the tables just for a second and just ask you, Greg, like, what are you excited about teaching uh, when, when, it, when it comes to this intentional grandfathering class? What are you excited about this class and, and what will those who are listening, learn from you. With this intentional grandfathering class, I'm excited about the possibilities and really sharing with people about how you can really make this role into something that really is exciting for you as a grandfather. You know, I think sometimes we're so focused on the grandkids, which we should be in our adult children and supporting them. And sometimes I think we're always facing outwards and I mm. like the idea of facing inwards to the mm. extent that, you know, if we're wanting to pour into other people, we've got to make sure our cups are full. And mm. some of that is being intentional about your health and your fitness, your mental health, and what it is that makes you cool and what it is that you want to do in in life. You know, we're just because you have a grand son, granddaughter doesn't mean that you've got to start slowing down. If anything, that list ought to start expanding because you should start looking forward, in my opinion, about adventures you want to take with the grandkids. Now, Mm -hmm. mine are two years old and 10 months old and four years old. So I'm already thinking in my mind, what do I want to do with them when they're 12? What do Mm -hmm. I want to do when they're 14? What do I want to do when they're 16 and 17 years old? And I'm starting to write that list and I want to share with other grandfathers about, hey, you know, instead of a bucket list, think of it as an adventure list. What adventures Mm -hmm. are you looking forward to? And they don't always have to be around teaching lessons. Sometimes it could be like, I want to do a three day backpacking trip. You know, I'm healthy enough to do three days. I'm not healthy enough to hike the Pacific Crest Trail, but I can go do three days with with my granddaughter. And we can camp and we can, you know, get scared at night when we're hearing squirrels running around or something and thinking it's a grizzly bear. (laughs) You know, all those fun types of things. So I know that's a long winded, uh, you know, response, but I do want people to realize that, hey, grandpas, you don't have to sit on your hands and wait for an opening that grandma gives you. Or you don't have to sit around and wait until the grandkids or your adult children engage with you. You can be out there leading and you can be out there living a fantastic life full of adventure, full of intention about building up the next generation. So maybe I should just cut this section off and do it as my introduction. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love it, Greg. I, I think that, um, well, first of all, I, I'm just so grateful that that I met you and that just knowing your heart and, and just having you as part of Grandparents Academy to teach this course, I, I know it's going to make a big impact and help grand, grandpas answer the call. I mean, that's that's what you're doing. And I love the way you're framing, you know, from the bucket list to the adventures. You know, that's that's perfect. I just, I'm so excited for you. This will be great. Well, thanks. And I appreciate the opportunity to really impact a, a number of people through your organization. So, you know, thank you for that. If nothing else, man, I think we're good to wrap this thing up. And I really do appreciate you taking time out this evening to uh, sit down on the Cool Grandpa podcast and talk to us. Yeah, thanks so much. It's my pleasure. And just, again, grateful for for the way that you serve, Greg, and and for uh, inviting me to, to just share more about Grandparents Academy. Appreciate you. Man, I always enjoy sitting down and talking to Aaron. And I love how passionate he is about supporting grandparents and supporting that relationship that grandparents can have with their grandchildren. Now, we know not every relationship is perfect. We know that there's many challenges, but we also know that we all need that encouragement. We all need those go-to resources and those places that are super easy to find that have answers for us that can really help us out with our relationships as well as our own personal growth. So I do hope that you go to Grandparents Academy, check out all the resources and classes that are being offered there. 
And hopefully I'm going to see you in my intentional grandfathering class. So thanks for joining us on this conversation. And until next time, remember to stay cool. Thank you for listening to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and share it with a friend. That's the best way you can help us to expand our community, as well as get the news out about how valuable grandpas are in the lives of those kids. If you'd like to leave me a comment or shoot me a potential topic for this uh, podcast, please go to www.cool-grandpa.us. Look for the comments tab, fill it up, hit submit. It's as easy as that. Until next time, remember to stay cool.